Well, it is good to be together here in the house of the Lord. As I mentioned in our introduction, we are continuing on a preaching series that we've been calling Liar, Liar. It comes from this idea that Jesus once said that Satan uh, is the father of lies. In fact, that when he speaks lies, he speaks his native language. And so you can see up in the picture uh, kind of the inception of his lies, which began in the Garden of Eden as he came and tempted our first uh, parents, Adam and Eve, and lied about what God had truly said as far as whether they should eat the fruit or not. And we've been looking at different lies that Satan has woven into the fabric of this culture we live in. Uh, Whether they were the first week as we talked about just kind of how the world says live for yourself. After all, you only live once. Or maybe some things like, well, it doesn't really matter what you believe. Everything connects you back to the same source at the end. And Jesus says, no, it doesn't. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You only get to the Father through me. And We looked even at what the world says love is, and we said, no, let's really look at what God says love is. And so as we get into our our fifth myth today, it's a lie that appeals to each and every one of us, and it's this lie that I'm kind of a big deal, you know, right? I think we all want to kind of feel like we're a big deal. It strokes our ego, it ties into our selfishness. It's something that we all want people to think, I'm kind of a big deal. We want people to recognize us. And so as we look to this lie, this lie that we're kind of a big deal, uh, it's not so much that I'm going to answer the question whether you're a big deal or not, because I do believe that each and every one of you here is a big deal. But what I want to dispel is the reason why we are kind of a big deal. And that's what we'll get into. Now, most of us here in the sanctuary, or if you're joining us online, um, I know there's probably some outliers, but I would, I'd be willing to think, even though we are multi-generational here at Redeemer, that most of you in some way or another uh, interface a little bit with social media, okay? So just by uh, checking out the generations, raise your hand if you are ever on Facebook, if you've ever used this platform. Anyone? Yes. You and I are the old people in the room, okay? Kids will not raise their hand for this. Kids have Facebook just to stay connected to their parents and their coaches. That's it, right? Um, so there's these different social medias. There's, there's more social media programs and platforms like we, we were familiar with Facebook. There's Instagram. There's Snapchat. There's, there's, there's TikTok. There's all these different things. And you see, these social media platforms are, are, are things that we use to help others see that we're kind of a big deal. We like to place our accomplishments and our achievements on there, and we want other people to to like us, to follow us, to acknowledge the importance that we seek in our lives. And social media kind of plays into this lie that you're such a big deal, you need to tell everybody about it. And we're all guilty of that. And, And there's different platforms that are out there, not just the ones that I mentioned. There's probably one that some of you are familiar with. It's not a real recent one. Some of you probably have no idea what this thing does. But, but there's a, a social media platform called Pinterest, okay? Some of you are familiar with Pinterest. If you would Google what is Pinterest, you would get a response that says, Pinterest is a visual discovery engine for finding ideas like recipes, home style inspiration, and more. And so with billions of pins on Pinterest, you always find ideas to spark inspiration. When you discover pins you love, save them to your board and keep your ideas easily organized to find later. That's what Pinterest is. So in a a nutshell, what Pinterest is, is a place where very creative people put their very creative, cool ideas online, and then we go there and say, wow, that is so cool. I want to do that. I want to be that. I want to make that. And I want to be accomplished like those people are, okay? Now, I'm going somewhere with this, okay? I'm not just talking about social media for for the sake of it, right? And so when you go there, you get all these great inspirational ideas. But there's also, you could Google Pinterest fails, okay, failures. And there used to be a website that actually kept track of this. 
And, and this is very interesting, too, that there are people who try to line up their idea of being creative, and they sometimes come up just a little bit short at times. So, for example, um, let's say that you have a son or a daughter that loves Legos, okay? So, you go on Pinterest, and there's this Lego cake you could make. How cool would that be at your son's fourth birthday? You have their friends over, and they're eating Lego cake, right? And so one mom uh, followed the recipe and, and tried to make her own rendition <laughs> of the Lego cake. I don't know if that got eaten or not, you know? Uh, vastly different. Or we just got done with Easter, okay? Okay. And some of you, as we do Easter, uh, you prepare food for your family. Some of you may be familiar with uh, making deviled eggs, right? What if you made your deviled eggs to kind of take on the spring theme of a, a baby chick hatching from the egg? I mean, how cool would that be to place on your Easter breakfast? And so some, somebody said, yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to try that for my guests. And uh, I don't, that looks like some spoiled ice cream somewhere, actually. Um, or my personal favorite is next, next week is Mother's Day, right? Can you imagine? This is such a cool idea, right? This one mom uh, took a, her picture of her baby. She put lipstick on. She kissed her baby from like head to toe, uh, took this beautiful picture. My guess is like at, at that child's graduation, she'll have it there as a way to embarrass him or her from, you know, all their friends. But it's just a beautiful kind of time's sake of the love that moms and children share. And so somebody else tried to accomplish the same thing there and <laughs> didn't turn out so well. You know, these are what we call Pinterest failures, right? Um, so often we try to measure up by how good we are at accomplishing or achieving something that we're going for, and we find ourselves like the Pinterest failures. We're thinking that we're a big deal, but we don't really measure up as well as we thought. You know, and we weren't the first people to use accomplishment and achievement as a way of measuring that we were a big deal. There were some Jewish folks during the time of the Apostle Paul who thought of themselves as a big deal. They thought of themselves as so important because they were more stoic than the rest of the people that were around them. They were more pious. They were more religious. And they thought they were a really big deal. And the Apostle Paul had to address them and set them straight. This is what he said. We heard this in our second lesson today. He says, Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and you boast in God, if you know his will you approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those in darkness, an instructor for the foolish, a teacher of little children because you have the law, the embodiment of knowledge and truth. These people thought they were spiritually superior because they were in a covenant relationship with God. These people thought that they were intellectually superior because they had been instructed by the Mosaic law. These people even thought they were socially superior because everybody looked to them in the marketplace for wisdom and guidance. And so they truly thought that they were the guides to the blind, the light to the darkness, the instructor to the foolish, the teacher to the little children, and they thought to themselves, kind of a big deal. But St. Paul, through the word of God, had to come to them and say, you're not as big of a deal as you think. In fact, when I hold up the image, you look a lot more like the Pinterest fail. And he would go on to say, you who teach others, do you not teach yourselves? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say to the people, you should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You have, who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. You see, they measured themselves by their accomplishments. And in so doing, they actually gave God a bad name. In fact, as people who are non-believers would look at these people who thought they were a big deal, they'd say, I don't want to have anything to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If that's what they're going to look like, Count me out. 
And so they tried to measure themselves by their achievements and their accomplishments. And I think that you and I, we have that same sickness, if you will, inside of us, that same drive, that sinful drive that we want to be acknowledged because of what we do and what we achieve. But here's the problem with that. You see, to make myself feel like a big deal, I have to start becoming pretty arrogant. I have to start thinking that, that I'm so much better than all these people and I have to try to put myself up as number one as the perfect person who's the biggest deal. But here's the problem with being arrogant. There will always be another person that comes alongside of me who's more arrogant than me, who's more accomplished than me, and who has achieved more than me. And so, how am I a big deal compared to that person? So then it drives me the other direction, where I'm not as good as that person, and I recognize I'm not really as accomplished or as cheap, and I'm not really good at all. And so it kind of pushes me in this direction, where I think everybody's better than me, and I'm in despair. You see the problem there? When we try to find our self-worth, and even being highly accomplished, we're either becoming arrogant in who we are or we're being driven to despair and thinking we're nothing. There's got to be a, a better way than finding our significance in what we do and what we are. And there is. And that's where God speaks to us today and says to each and every one of us, you are a big deal. But let me tell you why. You are a big deal first because you are a child of God. And that is a big deal. John would say in his first letter, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. In our next service here at the 11 o'clock, sitting in these rows here will be 12 of our confirmands who will be professing their faith in the triune God. And I want to share with them, as I'm sharing with you, that they are a big deal to God. But I think that our kids, just like us, they get the wrong message at school. They get the message that they're only a big deal if people like them in class. They're only a big deal if they can score more goals than their friend, or they're only a big deal if they're good at music, or they're only a, good, a big deal if they get good grades. And I want them to hear, just as we're hearing, that that's not what makes you a big deal. You are a big deal because you are a child of God. I listened to a Bible study uh, presenter just a couple weeks ago, and he said something very insightful. He said, even on your worst day, even in your biggest mistake, even during your worst regrets, you are still a child of God loved by Jesus. That makes us a big deal. And a second reason that we are a big deal is that not only are we children of God, but we've been chosen by God. I mean, there in Jesus' gospel there in John 15, he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you to go and, and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. You see, God chooses us to do wonderful things for him, even though we are sinful. He said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were even born, I set you apart. How beautiful is that, that God chooses us even though we are sinful and selfish. That God chooses us even though in his eyes we look a lot more like the Pinterest fails than the original. And yet that doesn't matter to him. He chooses us, he loves us, and he calls us to go out and to share that love of our Savior Jesus. The same God who would give us his son to cover over with the blood of the precious Savior that our sins might be forgiven and washed. That makes us big deals because we are in relationship with a God who loves us, with a God who gives his son for us, with a God who claims us as his children, and with a God who chooses you to go out and make a difference in the world in his name. So I want you to leave here today not being arrogant, 
not being in despair, but knowing the truth, you are a big deal, but knowing why. Because you are in relationship with a God who loves you. Amen. And now may this peace that we have, Lord, may it continue to guard our hearts because our hearts are so prone to wander. Lord, may this peace that we have, may it uh, encamp our minds because, Lord, there's so much stuff in this world that gets into our heads and we think in sinful ways. And may this peace continue to just keep us in that relationship that we have with you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.